this idea of NFT, IP on a blockchain. So an NFT is a piece of art or intellectual property that lives on a blockchain. And that living on a blockchain makes it, you know, one of one or one of 10, makes it scarce. Uh, you can prove that it's the only one, right? When we think about Picasso uh, or Rembrandt or Monet, uh, they're valuable because there's so few of them. And people can authenticate them because there's experts that have, you know, you know, study this over and over. It says this is the paintbrush stroke of a Monet, and you know, so it's hard to hard to to forge. Uh, that never existed in the digital world because you could just copy paste, copy paste. The blockchain gives us the ability to make sure things can't be copied and pasted, and that's why we're going to see this explosion of digital art, of multimedia art, of art that is created by the best brains in the world that now feel comfortable and confident that they can build in this new medium. We're gonna experience art in lots of ways like it's always been experienced, with friends, diving into what it means, why we care about it. NFTs will appreciate and value if they can evoke those emotions, if they can evoke those discussions. Uh, where we're gonna experience it, yeah, the, the, uh, the jury's still out. I had a fascinating conversation with two 25-year-old boy geniuses who are trying to get into this space. Uh, one was from art world, the other was uh, more of a tech guy. And we were arguing about the metaverse. In five, 10 years, will we visit the metaverse like we visit amusement parks? That's how a baby boomer thinks about it. Uh, those Gen Z dudes were like, dude, you're so wrong. You're gonna just live in the metaverse. And I was like, eh, maybe. Who, who knows? We're, the the, the future is going to play that out. And so what's important to know about NFTs is we're in like the first out of the first inning of the World Series. You know, like we're just starting. What scares me a little bit is the value of the architecture is a lot bigger than the value of the NFTs right now. And so that probably tells me NFTs can keep going up before they crash. Um, it also tells me the market's not irrational. People believe this will be a way that artists, creatives, musicians try to monetize their IP, where brands do, and that's not going away. This is not a fad. And so they're more willing to invest in the architecture because the art is so new. And so the bet is in three years, in four years, in five years, there'll be a lot more differentiation over what people care about. So this is a golden LeBron James. It's my first big purchase in cards. It cost me over a million dollars. And my mother looked at me, she says, are you crazy? Well, you know, she said I was crazy when I bought Bitcoin. She said I was crazy when I invested in mushrooms. Uh, my mom likes to think I'm crazy. And I was like, well, maybe I'm crazy, but maybe I'm not. Like this isn't enough buying a basketball. LeBron James isn't just a, this isn't a golden LeBron James basketball card. Le LeBron James is a golden human being. Like he's the Muhammad Ali of this next generation. He's a leader, he makes hard decisions, uh, he's a supporter of, of just causes. One day LeBron James could be the goddamn president of the United States and I got his rookie card. Uh, this thing is gonna be worth more money. Plus, we've got fractionalization coming, right? We're gonna make the distrib distribution of a piece of this LeBron James card much easier for everyone to participate in. Collectibles are going up because of the debasement of fiat money, because we're printing so much money, Gen Z, millennials, everybody these days is finding new ways to store their value. And unique collectibles are going up. There are not very many of these golden LeBron James cars. There are not many LeBron Jameses in the world, right, who deserves a car that people all want to cherish. Right? He is the best athlete of his generation. And so for me, this is an easy buy. Uh, you know, there are very few people that transcend the moment. LeBron James transcends the moment. And so, but you're seeing collectibles, all kinds of collectibles, from bobbleheads to digital collectibles to now NFTs. It's all part of the same movement of people realizing I can store value in other, other ways. Um, Bitcoin literally is, is the, you know, I, I'm the Bitcoin guy, partly because I believed early that this was a, a unique way for people to store value. 
And I think that spectrum is pretty wide. There's already enough consumers to make this a huge business. Guys my age are excited about it for different reasons. They're excited about it as investment. They're excited about it because it makes them feel younger and okay, let's understand where the world's, where, where, where our kids are going, where the world's going. Because they have brands that might market there, right? Every brand is gonna figure out how to market in, the, in this digital way, in this metaverse with NFTs. The brand that doesn't jump on board is gonna miss out on a giant consumer base. Um, this is only gonna grow. And so, again, if I was, I don't think anyone's smart enough to know exactly how this is going to play out, what the chessboard will look like, but we know there's huge energy. There's huge creative energy. There's huge finance coming in. There's huge technical energy. There's huge creative. And so something wonderful is going to happen in the space. Do your homework on what platform you're buying on, right? So you can get wonky and technical, one of the issues with NFTs is you have a, a key that li lives on a blockchain. Well, what blockchain does it live on? Some live on the Flow blockchain. Some live on the Ethereum blockchain. Some live on, you know, independent blockchains with the ability to go to the Ethereum blockchain. If, for instance, the Flow blockchain ceased to exist, your NFT would cease to exist. Are all the pixels on that digital piece of performance art in that key? No, in most cases, the key gives you the right to a database where those things live. Well, geez, if that database gets hacked, how safe is my NFT? Before you put huge money on these things, you should do some homework on what product, where's, where's the data stored, is, this, is the data being safely stored? Is it actually written into the, into, the, into the chain? Is it on chain? Or is the key a link to something that's off chain? Again, NFTs is such a broad subject there will be NFT art, NFT beautiful art. Put people in there, right? Where someone collects it because they think it's awesome art that evokes something. That's very analogous to the physical art world. There'll also be game parts that are NFTs. I'm in Dungeons and Dragons and I've decided I wanna buy this sword to help me in the next game. And I use that sword to kill some dragon. Like, to be fair, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, so I'm making this MNF4 up. But all of a sudden, it becomes more valuable. I might want to keep that sword in my virtual, you know, man cave alongside my baseball memorabilia. Uh, some games will let you take goods, you know, game parts out of their ecosystems. Right now, most don't, right? And so if you, if you play on, um, what's the big one, Fortnite, all that money that gets spent every year on Fortnite, it stays in the Fortnite ecosystem. So if Fortnite shuts down, all that shit I bought is worthless. Consumers are gonna demand that that becomes transportable in time. And so if you spent $80 or 800 or 8,000 on a sword, you'll be able to keep that sword. So that's a different mindset than collecting art. NFTs in the collectible area are probably gonna get overvalued and price is gonna come down. Same thing in the fine art area, but I think investing in NFT infrastructure is probably still a good investment. We're not sure which ones are gonna win, right? There's OpenSea, there's Nifty Gateway, there are 15 other projects coming down the pipe. Um, there's Dapper Labs that's raising a ton of money. Uh, there's Mythical Games, which is a game studio that's pivoted to doing NFTs. There are new projects that haven't been announced that I know of like five of. And so we're so early on, it's like saying, you know, which crypto company was going to do well in 2014. Um, there will continue to be money pouring into the system and infrastructure. And as long as the crypto prices hold up, which I think they will, people are going to take some of that money and do fun things with it. NFTs are fun things with it, right? And so just like in the real world, if you get a big bonus, you might buy a piece of art for your house or at least a new TV or you know, take your girlfriend on a great dinner. Listen, Mark Cuban's out there. Uh, he's pro crypto. He's pro NFTs. Ashton Kutcher has been one of the, the actors who's done the best job of getting into venture. Uh, he was a wrestler, so I've got a lot. Ashton Kutcher grew up in Iowa. So a little shout out to all the wrestlers. Um, Snoop Dogg, I already told you, is one of my favorite guys. And so it's good energy coming into the space. Like, it tells you that people care about the space right now. 
uh, some guys will like, oh, that's what a top is. No, it's not what a top is. Like we're so early on. Again, we might have a tempest in a teapot. Where prices get ahead of themselves and come back down. This is, we're going to lay architecture for an entire multi-generational shift on how people use digital formats to protect their IP. And that's going to be really cool. Oh, 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 oh,